we saw that Rutherford was having pretty tough time explaining how his model of atom that he saw experimentally could be true, right? And it was Neil Bohr who stepped in and made matters easier for him and he tried to explain it for the first time <clears throat> how it will happen, right? And that's why, so, so he tried to explain it for, for hydrogen atom and hence we call it the Bohr's, <clears throat> the Bohr's <clears throat> model for hydrogen atom. The Bohr's model for hydrogen atom. For hydrogen atom. He actually, the food for all this, no, no doubt, nevertheless, came from, came from Rutherford's experiment, right? So we should not take away that credit from him. But then the credit goes to this man as well for explaining what could not be explained by another four and ma making the whole structure of atom that was based on an experiment acceptable to whole of the world. Right? <clears throat> so, so, so one thing we should understand that this is, this is, this is not based on, based on modern quantum theory, modern quantum theory, which we'll learn in the next videos, quantum theory, it was, it was simply, simply based on the, the, based on the classical theory, based on the classical theory. Nevertheless, it was found to hold good for monoelectronic species, as we have been discussing, so, and hydrogen atom is a mono-electronic mono species, so, so it was, he was, he was pretty correct in, in predicting whatever he did, right? Now, the first, the first hypothesis that he gave, the first premise of his, his statement was that the electrons revolve around the nucleus at a fixed distance. Okay, electrons revolve around the nucleus around the nucleus in a fixed radius. Yeah, in a in a in a fixed in a fixed path called an orbit. At a fixed distance, at a fixed distance, in a, in a, in a fixed path, right, path, called an orbit, at a fixed distance from the nucleus, that is, that is you, something you should understand, from the nucleus, okay? <coughs> And when it is, and, and I told you, you should understand that we had only one, one relationship between Rn and Vn, right? By the, by the Coulombic force on the left hand side and the centripetal force on the right. And it was this fellow who introduced another equation and that is why the orbit distance, the, the distance of the orbit got fixed, correct? <clears throat> and we have used it in the earlier derivations. That, that we'll be writing here formally now. Okay, so at a fixed distance from the nucleus and, and when, and, and he called this, he called that, he called the orbit as stationary states, stationary, stationary states. Okay, either a stationary state okay or or allowed energy states or allowed energy states fine that was his that was his first take so so it was indeed a big contribution on his part to have fixed that distance otherwise we were, we were roaming around with only one relationship between R and Vn and they were both variables. So, so it seemed as if, as if there was no order in the atoms, right? 
so that disorder he was able to remove by by giving his his fourth postulate that that will come to later right now he said that since it keeps on moving there and it does not radiate energy so the energy the energy of an electron the energy of an electron remains a constant remains remains constant with time because he he altogether eliminated the uh, in a fixed path called this and he called this these is then and 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 in 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 stationary state i should write that in stationary state an electron radiates no energy it it does not it was only later that this was also also confirmed by quantum mechanics but but then he was pretty right in in predicting what he did the energy of an electron remains constant as long as it revolves in its in its stationary state that means the the orbit that we had fixed from that that equation as long as it is there it will not radiate energy and hence the energy will remain a constant with time right however so so then there was there was condition that however however it will however electrons will move from a lower to higher energy state a lower to higher energy state upon absorption of a photon of suitable energy right from a lower to higher energy state on absorption on absorption of a photon of suitable energy of suitable energy and will release will release or emit i i, I should say 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 it will or it will emit right and will emit a photon of suitable energy on moving from a higher energy level to a lower energy level right higher to lower energy level right fine and he said you can pretty well tell the frequency of the radiation so so the frequency of of the of the of the of the light can be predicted how if if e2 is the high energy state and e1 is the lower energy state then e2 minus e1 has to be h nu so so nu is equal to so nu is equal to e2 minus e1 upon h right upon h correct that is the frequency that is emitted or if it is making a transition from a lower energy state to e1 to e2 then this is the photon that it will it will absorb one electron will absorb one photon right so so here i say that that e2 is energy of the highest state energy of 
higher state and E1 is energy of the lower state and beware it's not always the case maybe someone someone defines it in an opposite manner they do that so don't get trapped wait and see when it is moving from higher to lower I know that a photon will be emitted if it wants to go from lower to higher then it has to be absorbed there, there is nothing great about it right so so it's very simple now the, the master stroke of Niels Bohr was his is, is this third normally is taken as third postulate they have split the second postulate into two so it, it took two and three serial numbers he said that the angular momentum that the angular momentum of an electron in a given of, of an electron in a given stationary state in a given stationary state can be expressed as can be expressed as as and, and I've told you actually L is it comes from the uh, rotational motion it is actually defined as r cross p where, where p is the linear momentum so p is actually mv but, but if it is moving in a circular path okay so this angle becomes 90 degree and and it kind of the magnitude boils down to r into mv and that's why you will normally see it to be this okay so 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 it is it is mv N, if, if we are talking about the nth orbit okay then then mvn into rn is the angular momentum and that is equal to nh upon 2 pi okay so so it means that electrons will only move in those orbits okay does Electrons can move only can move only in the orbits orbits where is angular momentum where angular momentum is an integral multiple of is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi right that is it has to be it has to be integral multiple of h upon 2 pi so it is n h by 2 pi right fine so so this is what he had to say okay based on this there are further conclusions that we'll draw and that we'll do in the next video